Okay, our first equation that we're going to solve using both paper and the manipulatives is the equation 2x plus 3 equals 9. Now I've separated out the two expressions, 2x plus 3 and the expression 9 above my workspace. However, you will use your workspace for your manipulative and you will use the handout to write as I'm doing above my workspace. Okay, first of all, the 2x is represented by two cups. Therefore, one cup is one x. So take this time and place two cups in your workspace on the left, as I have done here. Now notice that there is a box on both the left and the right side of the equal sign. And the purpose of that is to illustrate that this over here is an expression and this over here is an expression, but when two expressions are equivalent, we use an equal sign to show that this expression is equal to this expression. Let's pick up where we left off. 2x plus 3. Well, if you've ever used two colored counters before, you've learned that the yellow represents positive or plus 3. And of course, over here, this expression is 9. Therefore, we need 9 positive or yellow counters. Now, I like to organize my counters um, in columns. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7, 8, 9. So your workspace should look similar to mine, only your manipulatives are real. Well, remember that our goal is to isolate the variable x. So talking about our manipulatives, our goal is to isolate one cup. So if on the left-hand side, in my workspace, I have two cups and I have three yellow counters. Well, the first thing I need to do is remove these three yellow counters. Now, most students are probably remembering last year, the year before, when you solved the equations, some of this is coming back to you and you're wanting to move ahead. And I want to discourage that because these, these equations that we're dealing with at first are not incredibly difficult and you may feel the urge to guess and check. However, again, if you look at the equation that's on the whiteboard underneath the did you know fact, that enormous equation in blue is eventually where we're going to be by the end of the year, and that would be virtually impossible to guess and check with any sort of accuracy and in any sort of timely manner. So I want to encourage you to not jump ahead and go ahead and let the manipulatives do what they're supposed to do, which is really helping you understand inverse operations and why we use them. Well, these are positives, and in order to get rid of positives, we use negatives. So I am adding three negative counters, or three negative counters would be a minus three. So I'm going to use different color to show that I have placed three negative or three red counters in, on this side of the equal sign to this expression. Now you guys have probably heard whatever you do to one side of an equal sign, you must do to the other side in order to keep the equation balanced. Therefore, we're going to need to put three red counters on the right-hand side of the equation as well. Now I went ahead and I wrote my minus 3 before I put my negative counters down. That's okay. So make sure 
that you're working together in your pairs to use the manipulatives, but make sure that each person is writing on their handout what we're doing while we're doing it. Okay, now here's the interesting part. We've got all these reds and all these yellows. Well, you probably remember from middle school or elementary school if you've used these counters that one negative and one positive cancel out and become zero. One negative, one positive, cancel out and become zero. One negative, one positive, cancels out, becomes zero. Same thing over here. Three reds will cancel out three positives. So now I am left with one, two, three, four, five, six positives, and I'm left with two cups or two x. And let's write that on our paper as well. This cancels, and this, all this that you're seeing up here is probably uh, coming back to you, but the manipulatives are helping you see why we're doing what we are doing, why we're using these inverse operations. Okay, the very last step is we need to evenly divide the counters into the cups. So I'm going to separate these cups out because I, I don't want to deal with two cups, but I just want to know how many counters would be in one cup. Most of you are quickly seeing that it's three, and that's great, but physically take your yellow counter and place it inside each cup. Now make sure that we did this evenly because each cup contained the same amount of counters. Well, yes, it does. Now what did we do? We took our two cups and we divided them into two groups so that we would have one cup in each group. And then we did the same thing with our counters. We divided our counters into the yellow counters into the two cups. So the value of x, which is one cup, equals three. Now we're going to take our original equation. You may have written too big on your paper, and that's okay, especially the first time. We're going to check and see if our solution, let me go back, sorry. This is our solution to the equation. Let's see if our solution of 3 really does work. So we take our original equation, oops, 2x plus 3 equals 9. Now our work over here indicated that the solution, the value of x is 3. So we're going to substitute the value of x that we found to be 3. Now we use order of operations to simplify this expression. Notice how I didn't go all the way across because the entire thing is an equation. Just this portion is an expression and just this portion is an expression. This is already simplified. It's just 9. We need to simplify this expression here by using order of operations. This is multiplication. This is addition. Multiplication occurs before addition. 2 times 3 is 6. Simplify 6 plus 3, which is 9. 9 does equal 9, so that tells me that yes, 